here we are, guys. This is the Young Professionals Network uh, latest roundtable series with some of our TV hosts at the network entitled A Day in the Life of a TV Host. How did I get here? We are going to find out. But before we start this event, please be sure to mute your audio, keep your cameras turned off if you want the best experience possible, and keep the five of us who are on your screen now pinned uh, for the best possible viewing experience. So you know what the cool thing is, guys, about having you all be our panelists today is that I don't have to do all the talking as to what your day-to-day -day lives look like. So without further ado, <laughs> like some clips of the four of you. Let me see if I can find a camera person for this intro. Hey, man, can I ask you a favor real quick? I'm a host. I didn't do an intro for my video. Would you mind when we when we cross this travel sure, light no, together? No problem. Hey, what's up, guys? So my name is Paul Costable. I'm a host, a writer, producer, and well, why don't I just show you? You nailed it. Great take. I first started when I wanted my own talk show right here on the streets of New York. So I made one in the middle of Times Square with a cardboard desk. Hey, Times Square, what's up, everybody? And well, it didn't always work out. This is a late night talk show from the streets called Gorilla Late Night. Okay, okay great, great, great. Ladies and gentlemen, NYPD. Then I came to IR, and after harassing celebrities with a camera for a little while, I became the face of the brand, doing fun bits and interviews with pretty much everyone. I, 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 listen, you woke me up. Yes. Morning. Morning. Oh, wow. Hi. <laughs> so excited! <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> so... Jimmy, Lady. Alex, oh. Oh, I'll tell you what, you had flames out there, it's hot, you've got the leather jacket yeah. on, the leather shoes, you weren't tempted for the leather pants at all? I'll win the leather undies though, mate. <laughs> He's gone with the leather undies, alright, well let's see if you can get some fire right now from our judges, let's take a look at the scores. <laughs> you know what you remind me of? What? The yeah, dancing yeah, emoji, yeah. the dancing emoji. Yeah. All right, let's see if you can get another 10 from our judges. Let's have a look at your scores. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, oh, Congratulations. Gustavo, honestly, are you feeling the love in the room? I can feel the love in the room right now. Oh, yeah. It's, I was going to swear, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Very well behaved. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm proud of myself. Well, with 28, that means you two are in second place at the moment. Oh, there's going to be a party up here in the skybox, Amanda. <laughs> You can finish it. We like saying your lot. A what? No. O N D. Free agency is coming up. Everybody's asking you where you want to go. We know, or at least I say I know. You're not gonna say that. You're not gonna look at the camera and say, in 2016, I'm going. Yeah. I really never thought I would be shooting on the New York Stock Exchange, and I didn't think it would be with Trey Songz either. Oh, you're welcome. It's all good. South by Southwest. I'm here down here with my guy Anderson. Pack, what's up? Yes, Lord. They were like over like 150 bottles of champagne sprayed in like a tiny little cabin about the size of this. It was like tent. champagne and yoga. No yoga. No yoga. No, yoga. <laughs> no, 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 no stretching was done. Why won't Donald Trump be our next president? I'm not convinced he won't. That was some wishful thinking in yeah. your question. <laughs> so, Lawrence, and so <laughs> our little apartment yeah. forced, forced to leave the island of Hawaii. Uh, I went to the gym. I thought, well, if I could change. Were you flexing that entire interview? My entire body, <laughs> yes. But that message stuck with him and it inspired him to create the Titan Games, his new sports competition series. It premieres Thursday, January 3rd at 8 on NBC. Even the set looks incredible, incredible. over there. Do you see what he posted? Look at The Rock's cheat meal, guys. Every weekend, he enjoys what he calls the Sunday sushi train. 90 pieces in all. You're going to get mercury poisoning <laughs> from all that. But then he also has a cheat day with the pizza. You see that one? I saw his arm in that. Scott, look at the size of his arm. His arm is the size literally of my thigh. My Mixed with your calf. What you trying to say? He's like, look how big that is. Right. Well, I knew I had to up my fitness game oh, yeah. when I popped in on him at the Titan set. Wow. 206. Getting ready. 207. You got the leg. 208. 208. 209. How many push ups has it? 210. Oh. She, they say two. Woo! 200. Woo! Is right, man. If that did not get all of the 107 plus of you in this room excited, I don't know what will because the weather sucks here in New York. And I know for the four of us, <laughs> five of us who are sitting around, I mean, there's not too much to get excited about. So let's get excited about this, guys. I'm so glad you're here to join us. Uh, I don't have to give you an introduction. I think that said everything about what you all were doing prior to the stay-at-home order. Uh, if you can give us a glimpse into your day 
you know, a day in the life of what you all are doing now. Let me preface that by saying, you know, Scott, we're used to seeing you in Access Hollywood studio or on red carpet. Lawrence, I see you on my Snapchat, right? We're used to seeing you in the NBC News studio. Tweety, we're used to seeing you at 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. with E! News and Pop of the Morning in the studio in 30 Rock. And then, Paul, you're usually running around the streets of New York interviewing random strangers and celebrities. So, you know, in that particular order, actually, we'll start with you, Evans. What does your day look like now? Well, it's so funny because if you would have, if we would have done this two weeks ago, I would have said something totally different. We're actually back in the studio now, um, yeah, with a, with a kind of contingency plan for you know what potentially happens, considering you know here in in California uh, and across the country and even around the world, um, uh, COVID new cases are starting to spike again. And so we're back in the studio. Uh, typically, I mean, if you want to, you want like a what? What does the day look like, right? So we're typically up um, and looking at emails, uh, run of the day's show. And right now, it's the day before. So we we produce like if it's on Monday, if it's Monday, we're producing Tuesday's show. So at about um, six or seven a.m., emails start with the with the final touches on that show um, and also the potential update for that show, if that makes any sense. So if we're doing the day before for the next day on Monday, no, on Friday, we did the majority of Monday's show. On Monday morning, the first thing I shoot is potentially a news update for that show. So if something happened over the weekend that we want to update for, for example, BET Awards, that kind of thing, we would be shooting something very briefly for that. Now, going back into the studio, there are only four of us on set uh, because of the, the COVID-19 um, provisions and safety standards and guidelines, wanting to make sure that people can be as safe as possible. Um, your, your, your temperature is taken um, before you even enter the parking lot. Uh, you're given a kind of like a, a sticker or a, a, a marker on your badge to, to inform others that you have had your temperature taken. If you have, if your temperature has is over a certain um, um, degree, you aren't permitted into the building. And I think you have to have a, a two days in a row, your, your um, and that may be wrong on that on that, but I believe it's two days in a row, your temperature must be back to normal before you can enter the building. So, uh, and then we're usually shooting from anywhere between um, eight, not 8 a.m. Uh, I shoot the daily show and with the access brands now we have so, there are four separate uh, uh, like breakout brands from that. Access Daily is our daytime show. It's usually one of the first things we shoot after the, uh, the news update for Access Hollywood, the flagship show. Uh, and most markets, I believe nine markets now have uh, what is known as access or all access, which is like our extended access Hollywood show. Uh, and then we have the weekend show. So um, typically that's that we're, we shoot that from 8 a.m. until about noon, noon 30. And then we go into I go into typically I go into like a um, uh right now producer booker mode for stories that are important to me things that i think are important to have on the show uh, perspectives that i think are worth um or that need to be amplified uh and then go into what i call the zoom dungeon right <laughs> it's like the never ending day of the zooms um, and I say that i say that lovingly and i say it um with a smile on my face because while it is particularly exhausting um it can feel daunting and never ending i am so thankful to be in a position where i can go to work every day and can be working every day um and then like on a day like today i have this um and then i have to go uh shoot um uh voiceover and vtr for uh, world of dance so we're we're now in the finale the semifinals edit for world of dance and so i'll go and film that. So yeah, man, it's 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 great. Two weeks ago, it would have been something totally different, uh, and now this this is this is where we are. Yeah, this is exactly where we are. You brought up two things: noon thirty. I've never heard anybody else say that. I'm obsessed with that. Right? Noon, noon 30, thirty. Thirty. And then yeah, the people say twelve thirty. You're like, what? Time? <laughs> the second yeah. thing you mentioned was, you know, the fact that there's you're in like Booker producer mode, and you know you're having to do all this running around and. I don't know. There's just a lot that will come with all of us being at home. Even the Zoom 
dungeon that you're going into. Luckily, this is a team's dungeon, right? <laughs> but, uh, anyway, all right, Lawrence, over to you, man. I know you're probably not in 30 Rock Studios much, and if not, how's that going for Stay Tuned? No, no, I, I haven't seen 30 Rock in at least uh, what will probably be four months, honestly. Um, and to listen to Scott and his schedule, I'm like, well, that's why LA County is going to get shut down again, because <laughs> he, he done going to West Hollywood back to wherever. I'm like, well, <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I really have uh, been here for, I, I stopped counting after 90 days. Um, and I think, I think, you know, I think the experience I've had is really like a metaphor for the new news people. Uh, because literally the day before they said, don't come back here no more. There's a virus, y'all. The day before was a regular day. It was a regular day. Like it was literally like meetings, couple shoots, couple pitches. And then literally that night they were like, hey, yeah, yeah, don't come back. Like it's not safe. Yeah. Right? And I just think that's like a facet of news people because we obviously had an idea it wasn't safe. You know, so when you're like reporting on these stories, you know, whether it's international and it's Yemen or, you know, we're talking about protests, Black Lives Matter here in, in the city and across the, the country and world, really. Uh, I think news people are, you know, for better or worse, a little desensitized um, where it's like you're so busy kind of sharing and disseminating that information that you oftentimes don't take enough time to sit in and, and think about the pro and con of, of safety and, and kind of all that stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been here. This is literally where I shoot the show. I'm just like standing up and like in the back kind of. Um, I mean, it's 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 night and day, you know, it's night and day. Uh, you know, instead of shooting on like a, a very nice and expensive and earned DSLR that can show you all my white heads, I'm shooting on an iPhone, you know. Uh, that can still show you all your white heads. And, and it's still, uh, and it's still <laughs> in 4K. You know, depending on which, which one you got, you know, if you got the latest one, it shows. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I mean, the entire process is, is a little bit different. I think with it being remote, uh, timing has become more of an issue, you know, because now I'm in charge of setting up my set. I'm in charge of listening to my audio, making sure it's not peaking. Uh, you know, I'm in charge of getting that clip to the next person, because if you, you know, take 20 minutes or your Wi-Fi is messed up or whatever the case may be, that's 30 minutes that an editor has less time to turn that over. Um, so, you know, uh, the day, I guess, is the same, um, you know, morning pitch meeting, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm weekend, my shows are weekend based, so that's gotten a little funky, uh, where I shoot at least one or two of them in the first half of the week, and then the week, and then two of the shows I'll sh actually shoot on the weekend, uh, and I think that's just a facet of trying to keep up and stay ahead and, you know, make sure you got a couple, a uh, couple uh, pieces of content in the Right. So that you're not ever in a position where, you, you know, you, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, and then kind of how uh, where, where Scott says, you know, he comes in, you know, uh, at, at, in the beginning of the morning and shoots the uh, that's like TV cheating. Right. So he's coming in at like beginning of the morning to shoot what happened that morning. And then the rest of the stuff was probably shot like a day or two before. And then you combine it and they're like, wow, wow Twitter. They're just said that on Twitter. You don't that's know. Like, doesn't hurt that's you. like typical TV, like cheating, you know? So uh, I do the same thing as that, but uh, it's just more voiceover based uh, for what we do. So like, we'll go over a script. We'll try to talk about which stories are important. Um, you know, and I think that's like one of my favorite things to definitely debate. Uh, we call it what we're watching. Uh, and it's just a voiceover track that comes in overnight or, you know, the night before, and it'll be all the things that happen. So, you know, those seg segment one, three, and four are something we shot, you know, potentially two days ago, maybe the day before, whatever the case may be. Maybe, you know, sometimes we shoot at 11 a.m. and turn it over by four. It depends on the day. Um, but that one segment that we call what we're watching is how we kind of keep it fresh and updated. Uh, so the, the rest of it that you're packaging it around is more uh, estimating what's important to your audience, what's still going to be newsworthy, what they should know. And then that kind of last little, you know, 90 second, two minute segment of voiceover where a nice editor makes me look and sound decent um, is is how we keep it. Fresh. And that's like the TV cheating part where it's like, wow, Scott's been there for days. And it's like, uh, you know, I haven't been here for days or, you know, but we try to make it look like that. But yeah. The chief. <laughs> but, but, but being, if you weren't multimedia experts now, you are, right? If you weren't before, uh, that's so funny. Scott Tweedy, what about you, man? You've been here in New York City with me. Yeah, I've been stuck in New York City in my apartment. I'm like smack bang in the middle of Manhattan, actually down the road from Justin. 
But I pretty much my life since I moved to the United States of America in December, I moved from Sydney, Australia to New York, summer to winter within a day. It was snowing. So since then, it has been a roller coaster and it's always been changing. And I'm similar to Scott Evans. If you were to ask me last week what my schedule was, it's very different to this week. It's very different to the last couple of weeks. I've found myself being quiet some weeks and then the busiest I've ever been because you've got to do once again, everything from filming yourself to getting the lighting right to working on your producing, your scripting, all that sort of stuff. So a typical day for me back when we were on air, and we only started on January 6th, was waking up at 3.30 or 3 a.m. in the morning and we would get driven at 3.30 to 30 Rock, get into the studios, basically line up what we're going to be talking about live at 7 a.m., going into hair and makeup, once again, making sure all the elements are there. The trick for us is because we've been so new in at 30 Rock, our control room was still in LA. So we were still going through our teething process of just getting on air, doing those first couple of months where you'd throw to things live, they weren't there, and you're like, hey, it's live TV, who cares? The show goes on. Right. So we were getting into a rhythm of our shows and then all of a sudden COVID hit. And then we found ourselves filming from our apartments, our homes. Um, and same thing for me. I've just been doing uh, little bites for E! News, for YouTube and E! Online. Um, we only just had our first two shows about a month ago or a month and a half ago, Nightly Pop and Daily Pop, go back to broadcast. So I'm not part of those shows, but I did fill in for Justin for about a month on Daily Pop, which was great. So we actually had a team come in with masks on and install like a full camera setup in my apartment. So we've got just like a broadcast camera. It's a TVU unit, which basically picks the best telephone signal they can. And that pings it back to LA. Um, and I've got a screen, which we're basically mirroring Skype. So I can see the quad split of all the other hosts and a prompter as well. So we film that as if it's live, uh, but we'll do it 5 p.m. in the afternoon, New York time. Uh, so about 3 p.m. or 2 p.m. L.A. time to then air the next day at midday. So once again, we aren't live. We're working on or well, they're working on the going live for that show shortly. So, yeah, it's it's been a whirlwind. Um, but what a, I don't know. For me, it's been one of the most incredible experiences in my life in this six months being in New York City, especially as an Australian. Um, there's so many people asking questions about what it's like here. And it's been a really, it's been a really empowering, empowering. Like honestly, there's no regrets. I have no regrets at all moving here, and I'm loving every moment of it. Especially, a lot of people left Manhattan, and it's only sort of the bare bones of people here. So the sense of community here in Manhattan, it was like a ghost town, but it's like the best type of ghost town. And then with all the protests, like I live just across from Washington Square Park. It's just there. It has been the Black Lives Matters protest has been one of the most empowering things I've ever seen in my life. Being a part of the crowds there, walking around, it's honestly been the coolest experience, the, the most life changing experience, and all while doing a new job and doing lots of Zoom calls as well. So that's kind of a, a nice little summary of how my life is right now as a TV host. There we go, Scott. I, you know, speaking of. That's professional. He plugged the title. I see you, Scott. I see you. He's <laughs> got his own lower third. He's learning. He's learning fast. Fast. Well, speaking of leaving the city, Scott, someone did leave the city uh, and is now on the Jersey Shore. Paul, what about you? What's yeah. your life like? Well, I feel like the laziest guy on this call right now. I'm literally at the beach. And Scott, can you can you send those cameras down here? So I have, I have a little GoPro that's like this size. That's what I've been filming with. No, right. but what's... uh. My day to day is still the same, even though we relocated for a second here to, to just get some sun. But um, it's really been a change. In, and there's a lot of positive changes happened from the situation. So I do a lot of segments with mom and pop shops, a lot of small businesses in New York. And this whole situation has made the focus on them so important, right, uh, with, the, with COVID. So day to day has been a little bit more rewarding for me making these segments because we're finding these places. We're trying to put them on the map. I'm calling people all the time. I'm like stalking. I used to do this anyway. And by the way, I usually harass people on the subway. And so since I can't do that, I'm trying, trying to find ways to creep on people. 
on camera from a distance. It's it's difficult. It's a little tough for me because I, I get <laughs> don't get arrested I get a, on the shore. Paul. No, but I get I get a lot out of being the guy on the street who messes with people. And when you do it without like a professional camera crew and it's just your cell phone, you're weird. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, a, it's not, I'm on an NBC segment. No, it doesn't work. It's just, just the phone or the GoPro, right? No, but so I missed, I do miss that a little bit. But I will say these, these mom and pop shop segments, even up to today, I was talking with something called Merch Aid, where they partner artists with small mom and pop businesses in New York and they make swag for them. And all the, uh, the money from these t shirts and all these cool merchandises are going directly back to the small businesses. And so we're doing a segment on them for New York Live soon. And I've been, I've been hunting these out and really trying to find ones that can make a difference. And it just, it makes me see my job on the show in a whole new way. It's like, we're putting them on TV. We're trying to get them. Like, I want to support, I'm such a big mom and pop business supporter. I want to see them survive through this. So that's been a really nice thing. And the day to day is really looking through my different channels, trying to f talk to people, see where I could find these businesses and then also film from home. And the other thing is like, I become a one-stop shop like all these guys. And it's been really cool to shape my pieces in a way that are kind of new and unique for the show because we're home. Even so much that they said recently, like we're all going to go back. Well, maybe not. I don't know what's going to happen. We're talking about going back. And I'm like, I got a great setup. Like I'm, I'm, I'm turning stuff out. Like I have a little setup at my house and I've been uh, actually cutting my pieces. And so I'm kind of like, I'm, I mean, I'm down with this. I'm doing it from the beach this week. Like it's, it's an interesting change. Um, and I will say for the New York live team too, we, everyone's come together in the best way. It's just cool to be part of a show that we all see uh, the value of, of sharing stuff. And specifically with our show, it's a lifestyle show. So we see um, that we can offer a, a little different perspective on stuff and we can have bubbly light moments during this time. And so I've been keeping that in mind. I'm making horrible dad jokes on air from home all the time. And uh, it's been, it's been a nice it's been a nice change just to have that perspective on it. Not that I took it for granted, but I'm like, oh yeah, this is important to do these types of segments. But don't worry, when this is all over, I'll be back to going up to strangers and too too much with my cameraman or camera woman. But for now, my day to day at home has been has been okay. Well, we can't wait sort to of see a day to day answer. Like talking to strangers, right? And I so know they can talk to each other. Uh, that's yeah. great. I think the four of you. I mean, you brought this up twice already about the one my uh one stop shop idea and the fact that four of you have certainly started doing almost every angle of what your job once was right and how you all kind of touch different areas of production and then ultimately get in front of the camera uh to, to address that production to the audience so you know and then lawrence you mentioned the well-deserved dslr my friend and i think that's an incredible notion because at the end of the day you all did not start <laughs> as the host of a Snapchat show, the world of dance host with JLo and Derek Huff. Are you kidding? That's amazing. And, you know, hosting every single day on the streets of New York for live TV at 1130, and then ultimately moving all the way to New York uh, for a 7 a.m. broadcast on the network. So give us, if you can, in about a minute or so, just to be a delicate on time here, I want to, I have so many questions for you guys and our, everybody joining us does too. So in about a minute or so, can you guys give us a recap for what your career has looked like since the day you decided to, <laughs> Come on, you can do it in a minute, right? We just need one minute. We yeah, should just no, cut no, out. Yeah. It should just be word, no verbs. Just cut yeah. out the verbs. Just go right. <laughs> no, 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 no. You have to do it with no <laughs> and or wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ad libs. Ad libs. I intern, then I job. After job. <laughs> then I job. After job. We're all robots. Surprise. <laughs> no, don't let me and Paul go first because they're just gonna ruin it. Let let's yeah. let the Scots go first. They'll be better. <laughs> they're, they're they're pro. <laughs> Scott. Who's kicking it off? Evans. You go, you go. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll kick it off. In a minute, start the clock. Here we go. Uh, I went to college and did finance, commerce, and economics. I was so bored in that degree, I decided I loved TV. So I kept uh, editing all the time. I got a job at a radio station while in college. That led to a job in kids' TV on our national broadcaster called the ABC. I worked on kids TV doing a show like Punked, which was a hidden camera show for kids for four years. Then moved to our bigger broadcast, uh, which is owned by CBS and hosted a breakfast Saturday morning music show. And then just became a network talent and did all sorts of show for eight, eight years for our network. And then I built a relationship with NBC over those years and then got the job at E and moved to New York last year. Stop the clock. Whoa, Ooh, that, oh. was, that was really good. Evans, 45 seconds. You've done that. You've done that before. 
Uh, okay, so this is not going to go as well. Um, I started my first gig I ever booked. Uh, my sister booked me on as a, a young Reggie Miller playing against a young Larry Bird for the um, uh, Pace, Indiana Pacers home video. It launched my brain into, at the time, I wanted to be a ventriloquist. Uh, when I saw the production that the, and the, the way the crowd re responded to this video that I was in, I was like, that's what I want to do with the rest of my life. Um, I was a part of a, a, a youth video institute and YVI or YVI at Indiana Black Expo in uh, grade school uh, that exposed me to um, uh, notable figures and the, the basics of video production and kind of an after school program. We started a television show on MTV2 called 360 Degrees. Um, that turned into going to Purdue University to study theater and retail management, which led to um, moving to Los Angeles instead because I hated school. Um, moved, uh, worked for a production company that disbanded within a week, moved back to Indiana, <laughs> oh. <laughs> moved back oh, to man. Indiana, uh, and became the, the, the uh, on-court MC and uh, host for the Indiana Pacers Full Circle Moment. That turned into the face of my TV and entertainment journalist for uh, the local CBS affiliate in Indianapolis. That turned into an opportunity in Atlanta to um, uh, host a, a YouTube chunkable. It was Quibi back when YouTube was- Short clips. Like just exactly. Yeah. So uh, guys from uh, CNN and MTV left there to, to start this company. I stayed there for a year uh, and moved back to New York, uh, where I was born, moved back to New York to work for One Minute News. Some of you may have had it in your schools, and may, you may be familiar. Anderson yeah. Cooper, Lisa Ling, Maria Menounos were also former anchors of that show. Um, and then I sent, to, after four years there, graduating with the seniors who I started with as freshmen, if that makes any sense. I sent my tape to, to Access Hollywood and said, I want to work on this show. And uh, was a guest correspondent for a year. For a awesome. Year. A year. And then became um, a host of three of the shows. Um, uh, and le that led to World of Dance. Wow. Yeah. OK. I can, I can, um, I can go. I can give this a shot for sure. Um, I think for me, um, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do growing up career wise. And I just think that there were little, you know, one of my favorite books for life. And I, I suggest this to everyone is The Alchemist uh, by Paul Coelho. But like I talk about how much, how much, you know, I literally give that a, as gifts to people because it changed my life. And I just really, you know, can relate to the boy in that book uh, and where he's kind of just wandering around trying to find something and find his own little treasure. Right. So um, I had little things that led me towards TV towards public speaking, towards storytelling throughout my youth, but I wasn't really, you know, awoken to it, I guess. Uh, I went to Syracuse University, uh, which had the number one journalism school in the country, but I didn't get in. Uh, so I spent two years uh, undeclared uh, at, at Syracuse. Uh, I actually transferred in the last semester you can and still graduated uh, on time because, you know, I met with my, my counselor and she was like, hey, listen, like, you know, school is really tough to get into and, you know, so on and so forth. And I was literally taking credits as if I was in the school already. So once I to bet on myself, essentially, and then once I got in, I was uh, behind, but not enough that it would, it, you know, I could still uh, just load up 18, 19 credits and kind of pony pony up. But through college, uh, first and foremost, shout out to IRTS, shout out to all the uh, to all the young uh, professionals from IRTS, shout out to Joyce. Uh, shout out to Lauren. Uh, I owe you all emails, um, but because of resources like IRTS uh, and others, you know, I did my own radio show in undergrad called like Rebellion Radio, where like I gave out tickets if you called into my radio show and you know, <laughs> so on. And uh, so, you know, I had these these little things. So I ended up uh, transferring uh, get, transferring in, uh, getting some internships that were super valuable. IRTS, I really can't say enough. Um, stay connected with these people in your class. They will become professionals as you go on in this industry. I still have friends from IRTS that are, you know, doing well and and and, and in this industry legitimately. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I think from there I got an internship at CBS this morning. Uh, at the time it was Gail King, Charlie Rose, and Erica Hill. 
Uh, from CBS This Morning, I met someone in HR at CBS and got a job at WCBS Local. Uh, so, you know, you go from this like intern, which I think internships come with a little bit too much sparkle, because then when you enter as the lowest person or the newest person at a job, it's a completely different experience. Like that same person who is just like, you're going to be great. Follow your dreams is now your boss. And they're like, this was due. Stop it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know those, those things, it, it, there's definitely a transition and a learning curve. But yeah, WCBS uh, local in New York City working overnights. Um, so I was just kind of working overnights to get, you know, make ends meet uh, while also auditioning during the day. From there, it led to Revolt TV, Sean Combs Music Network. Uh, you know, that's, that's like that was like my big kind of break. Uh, to launch my career with an uh, entire music uh, network and entertainment network that was launching, I literally got to touch everything. Uh, you know, like literally I was like Paul doing MOS with a GoPro, being a creep to get the kind of, you know, uh, interaction and genuine moments that you need. Uh, we covered, you know, it's so funny to see the climate we're in because at Revolt, I mean, I covered like the 50 year anniversary of the March on Washington where Farrakhan spoke, you know, uh, we, we covered, you know, uh, all these shootings years ago. So to see it come back up now is just like, it takes me a lot of time to, to figure out because I, you know, we did that five years ago and people were still being shot at the race they were five years ago. Uh, so, you know, I have like some really walk and talk stand ups that I'm not too proud of, but I'm proud I was there, you know. Um, so I was at Revolt TV for about three and a half years. Then I went to MTV. Uh, they, they did a, a reboot of TRL or an attempted reboot of TRL. Uh, I was there for a year, you know. Uh, and then uh, from there, I've been at NBC Stay Tuned for a little over two and a half years. So and it's so funny because, you know, you, you put those years together and you're like, wow, this is like I graduated in 2013 It's 2020. This is like the six and a half, seven years work that I, I have uh, to put forth and speak of. Um, and it's it's humbling. You know, it's super, super humbling. So I guess that's my little. Lawrence, I don't know if you know this, but every time you got hired, I wanted that job. Every <laughs> single job you got. Like, I, and I'm not kidding. He's talking about these gigs. And I remember watching him move and being like, this dude is on it. He's on it every time. Every That's single crazy. time. I, 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 yeah, I never knew that. We never had that combo. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> like I said, anything you say in this call, Canon will be used against you. Right? <laughs> so that's why we're in here. We knew that before, Lawrence. We knew he had that stuff. No, I actually have a, I have a weird connection to all three of these guys. So Paul, you know, I, I interned just to give him an alley oop and let him let him go. Uh, but I interned with his sister. Uh, and that's she, true. Uh, yeah, and she's literally like three feet tall. And she literally was my best friend at that internship. Like literally. And like, wait, I, you're leaving out. You also went to the same high school I went to. Oh, true. And we right. also went to we the, went same, to the high same high school, school yeah. in Jersey. Sure. But we didn't know each other. Direct connection. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But I I, I, interned, I I interned with Paul's little sister, and she yeah. literally was like my like we were like we had a click. Like that was like my road dog, you know? Uh, right. and, and I just remember like uh, I, I remember seeing his last name and I was like, I know that. I know that name. Oh, I know that. <laughs> so <laughs> tell us about tell us about your trajectory, bro. Oh yeah. So uh, actually, my story actually starts at our high school. I did the morning announcements there. Oh, same, same. Comedy videos. And uh, I think we led wow. into your show, Scott. That before that show aired in high schools, I did the comedy what? videos. Right? Yeah, right before that, my thing would air, so it's all connected. Yeah. Um, and I wanted really to work was for Channel One because of St. Joe's because we used to play the news clips exactly. all the time. Yeah, yeah. We, we would lead that into them. But my bits were like silly comedy bits. And then and then the news would come on and yeah, be a lot more pro that. than my high school videos. But um, I actually started as a musician. I'm a drummer and I play a bunch of instruments. And I was always in a musical family growing up. And I thought I was going to do music. And then high school, the bug started to happen of like, it actually was high school comedy videos. I do these bits. I'd be dressed as like Sonny and Cher singing music videos. And I'd run through the hallways and hear, it was all guy school, hear all the guys laughing at my bits. And I'd be like, if I can get all these dudes to crack up at this video, these videos I'm making, maybe I could keep trying to do funny videos for people. And that sort of snowballed my interest into college TV station at uh, William Patterson, New Jersey, which is called Bill on the Hill, which is a commuter school in Jersey. But I like to rep Willie P because it's got a great little media program. And I was on TV every day for four years straight there, learning the ropes, editing, producing, writing, audio, everything really paved the way because I, I hosted a late night talk show there. And then that got me thinking, I want to be a late night talk show host. 
And then I started a show after college on the streets, which you saw in my reel, uh, which really changed it for me because we did a show from the streets of New York, a talk show for two years straight. Uh, no viral success, but consistency. Every Monday night we aired and that really helped me see how to make a show. And then from there, I was like, I didn't get, I got a development deal. I almost got a show with MTV. I was like, I'm just going to have a TV show. That's it. I'm not working for anybody. I'm going to get my TV show and I'm going to be done. And then uh, that didn't happen. So I thought I really got to get pro experience. And the only person, people hiring for TV production work at the time was Staten Island Community Television. I like to rep this year because I was on air for a year in Staten Island. Never stepped foot there. No, no offense to anybody from Staten Island. Went there to do this TV gig. Never stepped foot back again since I left that job. <laughs> and uh, But up to my Staten Island people who are still watching my street bits because they're still airing them. And uh, I got to get a little here. Okay. Um, that was a great experience too. Cause like these guys are saying, like we, it, I did everything there. I was producing writing and these were 22 minute, 30 minute shows. And they didn't want, they didn't hire me to host shows. I'm like, I want to do shows. So I had the opportunity to do these TV shows. I went out to half a million people on the Island. I saw it as an opportunity to just put my face out there and do silly stuff. And then from there, I got a, a job as a blogger for iHeartRadio. And that really was my stepping stone as an interviewer host where at the time they weren't really hiring internet hosts as much. And so I kind of decided to make the role with my boss at the time, this great guy, Colby Hall, who was, was a TV producer. And he was like, yeah, do videos. And my first day, I just like telling the story real quick. I went up to Nicki Minaj with a camera my first day as a blogger. And I did an impression to her. I was like, hello, Nicki Minaj. I am Hall. And she was like, her and her label, like, like, who the F is this kid with the camera? And I'm like, I'm doing, I'm doing videos for the website. All right. right. I'm All right. Impression. A good impression. And I almost got fired the day. I almost got fired the day. One <laughs> 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 about my experience there was, able, I was able to, I was able to, to, to convince to artists and labels that our videos were the videos, 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 and the artists started tweeting them, the and that's when them, and that's the thing at iHeart. Thing which I'm really proud of. It became really like a, uh, a, 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 we're not together and have a baby, which is crazy. So it changed my life and uh, got to go to NBC after iHeart. And it was a cool shift to go to local TV and be able to shift perspective from celebrities and uh, pop culture artists to these real people, which I really enjoy making these segments. And then that led to a Universal Kids game show hosting gig as well, amongst a bunch of other random ass hosting jobs. As you guys know, I did a show for Animal Planet last year. I'm doing like, we're just constantly wearing a bunch of hats. And uh, I used to DJ weddings and bar mitzvahs too back then in high school. And I wanted to mention that because that's all come full circle for me in the kids world. Like doing a kids game show is basically DJing a bar mitzvah on TV. And so it was nice to, uh, to just acquire all these skills and use it as, it's, as a host. Nice. Yeah. Well, we, if we didn't know more about the four of you then, now we do. Tweety, I want to make a quick note. The three of them have these intersection, uh, United States TV platform show intersectionalities, right? But uh, I'm yeah. sure now that you're here with us, you'll experience a bunch of that too. What people didn't know is pr Scott probably knew these three guys uh, some other way somehow too, but that just kind of shows everybody how small the industry really is. Uh, so more on that though, you know, to kind of be sensitive on time here, I want to leave you know, plenty of time, well, plenty being 10 minutes, my friends, but we're still going to try to make it all happen and, and do it within the hour. For, uh, but before we get to that, you know, entering this business is quite daunting, I would say, right? And the whole point of the Young Professionals Network, at least in my eyes, is to uh, ensure that the young professionals at the company of NBC Universal, and then now actually with IRTS joining us on this call, uh, you know, have the best possible experiences, interactions, and connections with people, not only in the company, but in the industry. So to that point, I'm sure the four of you have experienced one really good piece of advice from somebody, whether it was a mentor, a producer that you hated, then love now, uh, you know, but what is one small piece of advice that's kind of stuck with you since the day you turned that, whether it was a, you know, live red light or, you know, turning on the camera on the GoPro, what have you, but what's one piece of lasting advice that's kind of stuck with you this entire time? 
Whoever wants to go. Let's start with Paul. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, my, the one I, I always remember was my manager, boss at iHeart. He, he said, the guy who let me film Nicki Minaj, Colby, he said, do you. Keep doing you. And I think when you're on camera, you can morph what that is a lot of times. Like, who am I? What am I doing? What am I reading? Right. And it took me a while to develop, like, to be confident in the pieces I'm doing, the segments I'm doing, to, re to keep my spirit positive with the people I'm talking to, getting the best moments from people, and just continue to do you. Like, we all, all of us work as hosts, but there's enough room for everybody to do great work and great TV and great videos. And I think I needed that. I always need that reminder, especially in the business of uh, constant rejection. You know, like, you're, you're being told a lot of times in this business, like, nope, other guy other girl you know which is fine so to remember do you like there's a spot for all of our voices and all of our hosting and for anybody watching everybody and what exactly your thing is there's room for you and so just keep doing you in this business and you're going to do really well that's just something i remember i think i think for me uh one uh and i i don't even know if we could call this advice i guess because it's a you know, we're doing a panel here. I will call it advice, but uh, it was the last round of my Revolt TV audition. And in true Sean Combs fashion, it was a one on one with Puff Daddy. And, uh, you know, so uh, I had gone from like literally the cheapest and most low tech TV, you know, that I had been doing in college. Uh, and, and, and before that, and, you know, he was like, just tell me why I should hire you. And, uh, you know, I think it's really important to before you before you do anything, just sit back and think about the. And this is in journalism, but this is also just in life. Just sit back and think about the context of the conversation that you're having with and, and who you're having it with. So, you know, I was so hyped because I had worked so hard to get into this journalism school and show that I belonged and also earn, you know, these loans that I had come in. I was like, I, I got to have, I, gotta have a, I better have this degree if I'm going to have these loans. Um, and I, you know, told him, I was like, hey, I went to, you know, a really good journalism school and went on about this experience. And he literally stopped. He's like, hold on, I don't give a damn what school you went to, <laughs> like, like literally. And it just really showed me, um, the industry showed me this even more so, but uh, especially him kind of stopping me in my tracks and saying that is that like, you know, it really doesn't matter whether you're like self-taught, whether you went to a great school, whether you shoot your own stuff or whether you have like the budget for like every, you know, role in the world. It really comes down to like how talented you are, how hard you work. And then also a little bit what Paul talks about, how tough skin you have to have uh, where everybody's got an opinion. And it's literally, uh, you know, w what we do on a daily basis garners opinions. And, you know, if you ever get to a point where those opinions are defining you or or throwing you off your game, then it's 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 really not something uh, or a place you want to be in. So kind of him just telling me, like, I don't care, man. He was like, I need to see your stuff. He was like, he's like, matter of fact, I think he cut me off. He was like, you know what? Just play just play Lawrence's clips because I don't even want to talk to Lawrence. Anymore. <laughs> I think it's what? And literally what he said. And then and then he watched some of my stuff and he was like, now I like that. He's like, I don't care. I don't need to hear about your classes. Like he literally was like, Stop. <laughs> but it kind of showed me that like, yeah, man, the, you know, these these schools you went to, these people, you know, these names you can drop will never define you. Uh, they may help you. Right. They may, uh, you know, be some smoke and mirrors and get you by for a while. But at the end of the day, the only thing that's going to keep you here uh, in this industry is hard work, honest work and consistent work. Uh, and, you know. He, he taught me that where it was like, yeah, no, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's good for you, but it doesn't matter, you know? So I'm going to piggyback on that uh, specifically because I left, I remember I went to, I was uh, offered a full ride scholarship to Purdue University. Um, I walked away from the scholarship because it was pulling me further away in the moment at the time. It was pulling me further away from the thing that I wanted to be doing. And I felt like taking away from the edge that I would have in doing it right now by trying to come out in four years and then competing with all of these people who in four years still didn't have the kind of grasp and laser focus that I had um, uh, for what I wanted. And so I just felt myself getting muddied with the way Purdue was structured uh, for the degree that I was pursuing. And so I, I had to trust that it wasn't going to come down to what degree I had, where I got, where I went to school, 
um, what professors would write a recommendation for me. And so instead, I went out and got busy in those in those first four years. I took advantage of every single opportunity that um, I could, even some that I really probably shouldn't just because I would I could say I had the experience. I did it. I tried it. Um, it worked. It failed. Um, and so, Lawrence, I think you speak to it uh, perfectly and that you you've got to be clear on what you offer. A, a lot of time, I think, in this industry, we all want we all see a job. We want the job. We all hear about a show. We want to host the show. We um, a new network. Uh, or digital platform is launching, and we're like, oh, I can I can get something from that, or I can get something from this particular interview, or this um, uh, uh, interaction with the celebrity. And I think if you take a moment instead to think about what you can offer to the situation, I look at all of those clips um, that that was shown earlier uh, of these gentlemen's work. Every single one of them um, illustrated an ability to show up in a moment and make a deposit as opposed to waiting for something to happen and yeah. then you react to it. Um, I think if you take that same approach with your career, if you take that same approach with your life, um, not only will you be better for it, but the people who share your life will be better for it. Your job will be better for it. Your experience will be, will be better for it. Um, and you will have a truer experience of what that success means. So I think that's what I would say. Um, uh, forget necessarily the the plan and how it should go and what you feel like you should say and how you feel like you should perform and instead think about what about me is special in this? What about me is interesting or particular? Not necessarily special, but particular in this. Uh, and then lead them with what you can offer. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, how do I top all those three? That was three. Bit. I'm <laughs> writing stuff down as we go, guys. I'm like, this is great, great advice. <laughs> to top it all off, because I'm the last person in the line, I think it's really important. And I've felt I've been in, in TV working full time, which I feel very lucky for doing what I've done um, for 10 years. And I think it's always about no matter who you are in a production, treat everyone equally and the same because. If there's a runner or there's an intern, I've been on productions and in five or six years' time, they're my producer. Mm -hmm. And so you never know where you're going to end up. And look at us. All four of us now loosely have a connection to one another. That's just four people. The industry is huge, but it's really not that big. And I think no matter what you're doing, if you've got a team around you that are working hard, um, you all want to get the same result, which is making really good, entertaining TV or films or whatever it is you're working on. I think building that beautiful culture around you with people and just doing that like extra 5% to making sure everyone's having a good time like you are. And then while you're in your own lane, you're working hard doing what you want to do. I think that's the biggest and the best advice I've ever got from anyone. And I've just sort of naturally done that in my life, but I've seen some other hosts that haven't done that. And it's really come back, you know, in three, four, five, six years time to bite them in the ass. So to just summarize it all, I just think treat people the way you want to be treated and you'll see it time and time again, pay off and pay dividends. Because every now and then you need a little camera guy or an editor or someone to do a favor for you. And if you weren't nice to them a year ago, they're going to tell you to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love all of that from all four of you. Even if that's all we had from the four of you today was your lasting advice. I think, uh, you know, not only myself, but everybody, can appreciate everything you've said because it's relatable to the jobs that we have in this industry, whether it's on camera, off camera, running, script writing, what have you. Uh, you know, all of it's relatable to life as well because at the end of the day, this job that you all have is almost like a lifestyle, right? We looked at your demo reels and ultimately the four of you have such unique personalities that you portray on and off camera, which is why we respect and appreciate what you do uh, day in and day out. So before I get to the next part of this incredible event, I'm gonna turn into auctioneer, Justin, everybody. Can you please just stay with us for about 10 more minutes? I know we're all on lunchtime. Uh, if any of our panelists have to jump at exactly 2 o'clock, uh, please just let me know. But if not, we're going to ask for 10 minutes of your time so we can get through about 5 to 7 minutes of question and answer through our chat box with Ali Wise, who's on our YPN board here in New York City. Uh, and then we'll conclude with some lasting remarks from our diversity and inclusion team and myself with my colleague, Nicole Laura. So again, hang tight, the 100-plus beautiful people who are on this panel. 
um, event with us. And Allie Wise, if we'll hit the chat box, my friend, what have people been asking? And let's try to get about three or four of those nice. in there. All right. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, guys. That was great. So the first question is actually for our moderator, Justin. Um, Pilar Mera wants to know, can we talk about Justin's mic? Please share the link to where I can invest in them. <laughs> if only Where's you knew that microphone from? this particular microphone, I'll be really quick with this. I just ordered a really expensive one that got stolen, um, and we'll get into that later if you really want to know. I'll put the link to this one. It's, it's cheap. It's from Amazon, but it certainly helps. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. All right, moving on. Here. Next question is from Michael Caleb. Hi, what would you say is your best advice for people who would eventually like to be on air? This is a question for anyone who would like to answer. Can I? This is a question I feel like I, if, if I can speak for all three of us or all four of us, I think this is a question that we all get all the time. And I think I would like to say I would like to think that the answer is probably the same. If you're if the, the goal is to eventually get on air, at some point, you should start now. Um, there are so many opportunities. There are so many places where you can be you can be owning your own story, garnering your own audience, speaking your own perspective the way you want to, that you don't have to wait for an NBC call, a CBS call, a YouTube call, a Google call, an Apple TV call, that you could be um, instead um, hired to be exactly who you are as opposed to trying to be molded or cultivated or potentially, uh, um, what, is, what is the word, uh, uh, discovered. Mm -hmm. um, there's this idea that people are discovered and like, oh, I just, if someone, if someone will see my demo reel, then um, I'll get the job. And what, what typically happens, at, at least in my experience, it has always happened because you are working toward the thing, because you are on a consistent and regular basis doing the thing that it kind of was like, yeah, this is, it wasn't because you just sent a tape. So it, it, if um, the, the, the best advice I would give is that find a way to, on at least a weekly basis, create something that is you, your perspective, your story, your voice, um, that is video, um, and that highlights the best that you have. I just want to chain up that one second too, real quick, is because I, I think we've all always done it for a, a million different ways, including ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always was so set on like getting to a, a brand or like a title when really I think we all work for pro brand. It's the same hustle regardless of the, of where you're working and hosting. And so just, I like what you said, because it's, it's something that helped me realize like you never reach a place where you're like, Oh, now I'm hosting this show. I'm good. I don't have to do the work. It's still the same hustle yeah. as when I was doing the show on the streets by myself. So it's, you maybe have more people to help you do it, but yeah. sometimes, but that doesn't go away. And, and I think in this generation of, um, you know, things look a certain way on Instagram. You look at my Instagram, I'm hosting the Emmys this year, but that's not really what's happening. I mean, like we, sometimes it looks as flashier than it might be, but you got to go out there and, and just do you and figure out a way to, hone your skills so you can work more and more and, and and don't be ashamed to do it in a in a in a small it might look small your friends whatever just do it you know what i mean does that make sense and i think last but not least learn how to edit if you can yeah. learn how to edit that then you become a storyteller as well and you learn how to do things quicker than everybody else i think i think just to wrap it up and i'll give you like a, a little street fit a phrase is like you, you ain't got to get ready if you stay ready right so <laughs> As long as you work in, as long as you, you know, you, the, the, the truth about it to me is that like, I think everybody has their own NBC Universal in their phone, in their, in their hand, right? Like, so you could literally do your own live show from your Instagram every single day if you wanted to, right? So uh, I, I think that, you know, the industry that, you, that uh, you're entering and the industry that we entered are two different industries and there's so much opportunity. Uh, if you want to do live, if you want to do pre-tape, you want to do short form, you want to do doc style, there is, you know, I know you have a friend who has a friend who, who has some cameras, right? Uh, or has at least the latest couple iPhones that is comparable, right? So, you know, you, you don't have to get ready if you stay ready, keep your head down, work, and the timing will find you. Don't, don't think about the June of 2021, I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna work out if you put the work in. It's funny Lawrence says that because my first opportunity on primetime on Australian TV, I was in our office working for our music show 
And at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they're live on air at Fox Studios at 7 p.m. At 3 o'clock, I get a tap on the shoulder from an executive saying the main host hurt his back on his property earlier that day. So I had about a two and a half hour window to go from office wear, just relaxing, to being on a set, to being live around the country. So once again, you've got to always be ready. You never know when that opportunity is going to come. That's great advice. Thanks. I think we have time for one more. Uh, this one's from Janelle Finch, and she wants to know, what would you say are the not so glamorous parts of working as a TV host? Oh, wow. How do you flip this camera? <laughs> I can show you some not so glamorous. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Hope you know. I, I wow. Uh, there's there's a couple for sure. Uh, I think the trolls and the internet is definitely one, a minor one. But like, I'm not gonna lie. I had a guy the other day, and he just was like, yeah, you know what? I don't feel like talking to you anymore, man. I don't feel like arguing with you. And I block him, and he makes another page just to mess with me. You know, and. Things like that is like, bro, like, I do not have time in my day for this. Like, there is a whole pandemic. There is a couple pandemics actually going on. Um, and uh, this, this, I'm not going to argue with you on the internet, sir. You know? So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, the internet is definitely like a haze sometimes. It definitely could be a bit trolly. Um, and, you know, I, I had a professor in college that said one thing, and I, I didn't believe him then, but I believe him now. And, he, you know, I, I think... Uh, Paul kind of uh, alluded to it where it's a little bit more flashy than you think, but like, you know, yeah, it's definitely a job, you know, people almost come up to me like I'm just like partying all the time, you know, just because I have some followers or hey, how are you, Asia? I interviewed a celeb or whatever it is, but like, uh, good, good. I got a couple of feeds for you on DDR 1004. Hey, oh, Steve. perfect. I'll take that. I'll take that. DV, no, it's DV5. Yeah, yeah. How much are the feeds? <laughs> about three minutes Is that no, i got it on prime that should be free yeah yeah they, they just pay in time time is money they just they just released you know you could group watch on prime that's that's oh that's God, God. everyone yep. knows that why do you think Thank we're here <laughs> at least at least what he's talking about is okay like it could have been way worse audio. it could have been way worse. <laughs> <laughs> and her a lot worse my friends sorry lawrence I, what you're saying. Um, yeah no i just you know i just i was gonna kind of pass it to you but uh yeah it's just you know i i just think that uh, it's a job it truly is a job uh especially you know the hours uh tweety's working that's a job you know like i i i you know before i was on camera those were my hours that kind of 3 a.m to 12 the 7 a.m to 2 p.m it's a job man like when you ever have to change your sleep schedule or your social life that's a job you know uh so you know i just think that like yeah it has great moments and uh, i am blessed and thankful to to have the job and career i have but it is a job for sure and any and treating it anything less than that will will take it away from you sooner um yeah the glamorous side you've just got to it's, once again i i I agree with you, Lawrence, it is a job, but also when you love it so much, you don't mind if you only get a little bit of sleep some nights because you want to do the best job you can. So like all of us will know, if you're ever interviewing any professional artist, any actor, any actress out there, when we go in there with questions, the more time we spend behind the scenes, even though if we're spending 10 minutes with them, the more time we know, the more time we spend on the research, the better the interview. We might not ever talk about anything we researched on them, but just being confident and being present there with them um, makes a much better interview. So, yeah, it's there's no end to how hard and how much we work. But I think you do have to love what you do. Otherwise, you won't stick around for long. And you guys stuck around for a pretty long time. Scott, seems like you're about to say something, yeah? Well, I just, I, I'm thinking about how to say this without necessarily sounding away because it's not necessarily about it being glamorous but it was something I was I did not know that I would have to be consistently aware of I don't know how many people in this in this group are uh, people of color or people who identify um, uh, uh, in a non-binary sense or with their sexual orientation or expression um, but I will say that it has been, I have noticed in the last couple of years, a real shift in um, visibility and seeing people and um, 
who reflect various experiences of not just Americans, but various experiences of people around the world. And um, it is not always easy to have the kinds of conversations or comfortable to have the kind of kinds of conversations that call people forward, that allow people to stand in their space, that, uh, that, that encourage people, not allow, but encourage people to hold their space. Um, and I would say one of the, this is the part I was saying, I don't know if, it, if, it's, if it's about it being glamorous or not, or not but I think it is, it is imperative that it's, it's at some point brought up in this, in this conversation is that as, as young people in this industry who are going to be shaping this industry, I think it is important that we hold that space for one another, not just in our conversations or in our social media advocacy or in our fundraising, but also in the spaces that we work in. I think it is important to um, notice, to see and to um, love on the people around us that we work with, that we interview, um, who may in some ways be different than us. Um, I think it's really imperative now more than ever. I mean, you see with the Black Lives Matter movement, you see with, you know, Lawrence, uh, uh, you spoke on it earlier, I remember being in in um, Ferguson when Mike Brown was killed, standing between police officers and protesters and um, feeling like this wasn't going to be the last time I was going to be there. And so I think the only way we have less of those experiences, and not necessarily as dramatic or as hurtful or harmful or fatal as a, 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 shoot, a, a police shooting, um, I think we got to take ownership and responsibility, and that can sometimes be less glamorous. It can sometimes be less glamorous to, to know that you are a position of, of power, um, that you are in a position of note, and that you, there's a responsibility that you share. Um, and so I, that's what I was struggling with. I don't really know if I actually articulated the thing, but I just think that as, as people in media, it is it is incumbent upon us to tell the story and to be honest. And that requires us to be honest with ourselves. And if we're un unwilling to be honest with ourselves about how we relate to each other, then we can't really grow. We can't really grow. And that this moment in time is requiring us to grow. Yeah, certainly. Well, then thank you for all of that, guys, especially you, Scott. I'm glad to end on that note, particularly because of the times that we're going in. And if we had more time, although time is really just a number, right, my friends? Uh, you know, I wish that we could have dove a little bit more into everything that's going on in the world right now. But we also get to see you all report on those exact topics every day. So I'm very grateful for that. Uh, for everybody who's still left on the call, thank you so much for continuing to stay with us. Although I hope that you have two computers. One's this event and the other one's work. So... <laughs> <laughs> Before we conclude, guys, I want to thank you so much for your time, uh, your energy, the work that you do, again, day in and day out, from, from a news, an entertainment news, a lifestyle, uh, a, a, you know, a live show, pre-tape, whatever it might be. All of it comes down to storytelling, and I think the entire company, I can say this on behalf of all of us, at least on the YPN side and the diversity and inclusion side, thank you for being a great representation of what we would all like to see as TV hosts as storytellers, and ultimately as employees of the company. Before we finally, finally conclude, I see numbers dropping, don't go just yet. I would love to invite uh, Sal Mendoza, if you're still on the call, he's our Vice President of Diversity here at NBC Universal, and or, and actually both of you, if you're both on, Antoinette Miller, who's our uh, Director of Diversity and Inclusion as well. Hey, th thank you, Justin. And I just want to say, Scott, I, I just, on behalf of the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, I couldn't have said it any better than that, quite frankly, in this space and time. I just want to thank you for spending the time with our Young Professionals Network Group because your visibility, your presence, and your voice, especially all of you in this environment is so needed. And I'm so glad that our company provides that platform for all of you in different ways to say it. Uh, Justin and, and Nicole, thank you very much for leading YPN. Justin, obviously your, your, your skill set in, in, as a cor correspondent and producer is amazing because to manage four people who do this for a living and speaking in front of a camera and mics, uh, you did an amazing job in keeping everybody uh, on board. So thank you very much uh, for doing that. I, I just regret that Justin asked me to say a few words because 
I think I just increased the average age of YPN panelism this by 10 years. <laughs> So, <laughs> hey, time and age, just a number, Sal. <laughs> so I, do, I just want to yeah. say thank you, guys. We really appreciate you being involved and engaged with everything that we do and how you represent us as a company in front of there and how you tell the stories uh, about our communities as well. So thank you. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Appreciate your words, Sal. Antoine, if you're still on, I'd love to hear, we would love to hear from you as well. I believe she's a busy woman, my friends. All right, before we conclude, we're going to quickly take a screenshot. Um, Allie or Nicole, if you're on, maybe you all can do it. My MacBook is not allowing me to see all four faces. I'd love to take a screenshot with everybody on the camera. Um, I'm here. Okay. I can do it. Okay, and Allie, give us about right. 30 seconds. If we can get everybody else who's on the call, too, I want to see how many faces we can fit on this beautiful screen. Uh, if we can have everybody turn on their cameras, please join us and smile, especially you IRTS fellows. I want to put this all over your social media. Um, it's real people, not just circles. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> There's faces. Uh, all right. The 50 of you, if you all would like to join us as well. Um, I, have, I have nine. I have nine boxes. I thought it was going to be like 50 little boxes. I would hope it'd be more. I think nine is the max, but at least we have some representation here from IRTS. So that'll do for now. Alex, you'll take a screenshot, my friend. This would be so great to end. Yeah, ready? One, two, three, smile. Got it. <laughs> All right. Everybody, thank you so much for your time. Again, your energy, all of our panelists, brands aside, I think the four of you are phenomenal. I personally look up to all four of you and have for quite some time. So thank you for saying yes when Nicole and our YPN team and I uh, reached out to you. Thank you for being at this company. Uh, and ultimately, thank you for everything that you do. And then everybody on this call, thank you for continuing to stay on, even though we, uh, we started a little late and a little late. Again, we're all at home, so what does time even mean anymore? It was good to see all of you, and I hope you stay healthy, well, and safe in your respective areas. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see everybody again quite soon, hopefully in person. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.